1954, Saul Price opened a department store called FedMart. It was a unique store in that it only served government employees and they had to pay a $2 membership just to shop there. Over the next couple decades, it successfully grew into a chain of 40 stores across the southwestern part of the United States. Along the way, it became a public company and in 1974, this guy Hugo Mann, who started a chain of supermarkets in Germany, bought a controlling interest in FedMart for $22 million. Hugo Mann did not get a along with Saul Price as far as how to run things, so Saul was soon forced to leave the company that he had started and ran for more than 20 years. Hugo Mann then attempted this aggressive expansion strategy with FedMart that did not work. They started losing money and by 1982, they shut down altogether. I know, this doesn't sound like a significant story so far, but trust me when I say the entire retail industry would almost certainly look completely different without it. First off, it affected Target because after Fed Fedmart closed, they took over a bunch of those locations that were conveniently available for them as a helpful part of their strategy to expand into that part of the country. Secondly, Walmart was affected by this on multiple levels. I thought it was interesting that in 1997, they bought that German supermarket chain that was started by Hugo Mann to establish their first ever presence in Europe. In addition to that, Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, said that he chose the name Walmart because he liked the sound of the name Fed. Mart. So there we have it, Walmart and Target were both affected by those events in fairly significant ways, but the biggest impact comes from what Saul Price did after he left FedMart. See, soon after, in 1976, along with his son Robert, he started a new store called Price Club, and that was such a perfect name. In fact, I cannot believe that someone named Saul Price didn't utilize that last name until starting his second retail chain. But maybe it was good that he waited, because this one became an even bigger bigger success. At first, the concept of Price Club was very similar to the one that he used at FedMart. They had low prices compensated by a $25 membership fee, but this time, instead of government employees, the members were meant to be small business owners. For this particular store, that proved to be too limiting. The business lost over $750,000 in its first year, so he opened it up to more and more customers, eventually to the general public, and things started getting better. It was such an uncommon idea that the members would tell the people that they knew about it. It was a free form of advertising to get the word out there. And there was ridiculously high inflation at the time, making their low prices look even more attractive. They kept opening more locations, and Price Club became somewhat of a retail sensation. The model that he established with Price Club was very similar to the model that would later be adapted by both Sam's Club and Costco. It is a very specific business model with many different parts working together. If you want more detail about it, I can refer you to this video I made focusing on how Costco runs their business, but most of the principles apply to Sam's Club and many of the others as well. In short, the overall idea behind this kind of business is to keep prices as low as possible so they can sell as much stuff as possible. Sol Price has said, all I wanted to do was sell for the lowest price possible. It is low margin, but high volume, and you can see how they're kind of pushing for that to happen by selling most of their stuff in these absurdly large quantities. Some of the largest containers that you will ever see are in these stores, but the less obvious part of it involves reducing their costs so they can afford to sell things at low prices. To do that, they maintain a simple store design. There's nothing fancy about their basic warehouse setting. They handle their inventory as little as possible, you know, how it's displayed on the floor, oftentimes still on the pallet or in the shipping containers. And that inventory is typically bought straight from the manufacturer in large quantities, cutting out any middlemen and allowing them to obtain it for as little as possible. The remaining part of it that allows all of this to work is the membership. The memberships themselves promote loyalty and the money that they make from selling them compensates for the small margins and further allows them to sell things at such low prices. Do you see how it all works together? Again, it's all in the other video, but these are the things that make them different from your typical store. So by the 1980s, when Price Club had proven the success of the model, everybody wanted to be a part of it. Throughout the decade, all of these similar chains of wholesale, 
warehouse club type stores started popping up in different regions across the country. Price Savers and BJ's were a couple of them, but 1983 was specifically a big year because that was the start of both Sam's Club and Costco. The inspiration from Price Club is pretty obvious for all of them, but for these two, it was even more direct. Sam's Club was started by Sam Walton as part of the Walmart company, which is where the name comes from. And he has practically admitted to borrowing ideas from Price Club after having met with Saul Price in the early 1980s and taking a guided tour of one of his stores. On the other end, Costco was co-founded and led for almost 30 years by Jim Senegal, who had extensive experience working with Saul Price. He had started his career bagging groceries at FedMart during its first year and followed Saul Price to Price Club, working as an executive vice president through the 1970s. He has gone as far as to say that he's learned everything he knows from Saul Price. So throughout the 1980s, we had the original Price Club and a bunch of copycats, including Sam's Club and Costco. Well, despite originating the concept and having a solid head start, it only took less than five years for the copycats to surpass the original. The number one reason for that would probably be the conservative approach by Saul Price. I would guess that to be a big reason that he didn't get along with Hugo Mann over at FedMart. With Price Club, everything was slow and steady. They were very careful about opening new stores. They would spend time researching the area, being careful not to move too far away from their established market, and usually insisting on owning the property as well. Which, I'll admit, sounds like a smart way to go about it, but not when things are this competitive. You had all of these other chains taking over regions of the US, and once they established their name there, it was much harder to break into it. Meanwhile, Costco was being aggressive, opening stores in their own market in the Southwest. Sam's Club had the financial backing of Walmart behind them, not to mention their relationships and distribution system. And on top of that, there were all these other major chains getting into the mix. Like in 1989, when Kmart spent over $300 million to buy the 41 locations of Pace Membership Warehouse. By the 1990s, after about a decade of aggressive competition and consolidation within the industry, there were four chains remaining that stood out above the others. There were Pace Membership Warehouse, Costco, Sam's Club, and Price Club. The industry had started to cool down. Other large specialty stores were cutting into their sales, and after so much expansion everywhere, the market was starting to get saturated. In 1993, because Sam's Club was now the biggest, the most aggressive, and had the strong financial backing of Walmart, the other three were afraid that they would acquire one of them. Like, say, if I'm Costco, I don't want to be acquired myself, but I also don't want Sam's Club to buy one of the other two, because that would make them even bigger and harder to compete against. So, to get ahead of that, Price Club and Costco merged together. It made perfect sense. The second and the third largest coming together to take on the largest. And then you also have CEO Jim Senegal's previous relationship with Price Club. Later that same year, Sam's Club answered to that by acquiring most of the Pace warehouse stores from Kmart. Meaning within the year, the top four warehouse stores had come together into the top two. And again, I think it makes perfect sense. Remember that these are stores that operate based on the principle of high volume. And the way you achieve the highest volume is by having as many stores selling as many products as possible. So that is the sequence of events that led to the United States having only two competing chains of warehouse club stores that stand out in size well above any of the others. To make some comparisons between Sam's Club and Costco, the stores themselves are honestly not much different. Over the years, they would kind of follow each other's lead. They would see what changes worked or didn't work for the other store and then make their own changes accordingly. I'm talking about the products they sell, the sections, the way both of them started attaching gas stations to their stores, even the memberships. If anything in this video made you want to become a member of one of these two stores, you'll find out that the membership structure is very similar. When looking at Sam's Club, you have the choice between the club or the plus membership. $45 a year compared to $100 a year. For that extra $55, you get a few different benefits, the main one being the cash rewards. You get 2% cash back on qualifying purchases up to $500 a year. So pretty much if you plan on spending a lot of money there, you may want to go with that one. Now, when looking at Costco, again, it's two levels, either Gold Star for $60 a year or Executive for $120. Yet again, the main difference is the 2% cash back, but this time it's up to $1,000 instead of $500. But unless you plan on spending over $25,000 there over the course of a year, I wouldn't let that factor into your decision. Costco 
does have business memberships as well, it's a different thing, but overall, they're both very similar. However, there are some factors that may have a greater influence over your decision. Since 1995, Costco has been selling Kirkland Signature branded items. It's their popular private label. It's typically cheaper than their name brand products, so if you tend to like stuff from Kirkland Signature, it may lean you toward Costco. Their reputation, as far as treatment toward employees, as well as other things, can be considered. I don't want to go too deep here, but Sam's Club is owned by Walmart, and for various reasons, like wages, the Costco employees tend to be more satisfied at their jobs. That could easily be reflected by their attitude and the overall environment inside the store. Oh, and I should mention that Sam's Club is almost entirely in the United States, whereas Costco has over 200 locations in other countries around the world. The stores themselves are similar in size. The average Sam's Club is 134,000 square feet compared to 146,000 square feet for Costco. But there is a bigger difference between the size of the companies. There are a lot of data points on this graph. Throughout the 1980s, it was about the same. Technically, 1987 was the only year Costco had more locations, but then Sam's Club took a big lead in the early 1990s that slowly decreased until Costco surpassed them in 2013. And they have only continued to gain on that lead since. Plus, Costco has always had higher sales per location, so they've been the larger of the two of them in terms of sales since the 1990s. Overall, just looking at some of the basic figures, like comparable store sales or operating income, Costco has been looking stronger, and at this point, by almost any key measure, Costco is the bigger, more successful of the two. Let me know in the comments, are you a member of either Costco or Sam's Club? See, that's the thing, because of that membership fee, they are unlike most stores, and that customers kind of have to choose one or the other. Or maybe you're a member of BJ's or one of the other smaller chains. Also, what do you think of Saul Price? I took a little time to talk about him before the more popular chains because I thought it was a great story and he's had such a direct influence on both of them. And any other thoughts you have about Sam's Club, Costco, or anything else I talked about in this video, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.